Mr. Guy Chambers. I mean, were your parents musical? Yeah, my dad's a flute player. Oh, is he? So he played in the London Philharmonic Orchestra. And uh, my mum used to work for Decca Records. Oh, right. So there was, there was a lot of music in the house, I imagine. Yeah. And uh, so from about the age of five, I would go to the festival hall and sit in uh, rehearsals, hearing a lot of classical music, really. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think it's informed what you do now, that um, those formative years? I, I think the sorts of songs I write are quite symphonic. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're quite over the top. And I think I get, it, get that from listening, been growing up with Prokofiev and well, which Strav- we'll come on Stravinsky to later. and yeah. people like that, yeah. you know. Um, well, Prokofiev was my first love, really, as a composer. I really want to get on to um, World Party. Yeah. Now, World Party were essentially, until you joined, it was a, it was a one-man act, wasn't it? A yeah. guy called Carl Wallinger, who's an incredibly t- sort of talented multi-instrumentalist. How was it suddenly, you know, working with somebody who was so used to working on their own and having the entire power? Was it a a comfortable relationship? No, no, it was uh, pretty difficult because he he was used to working on his own and he used to like working at night. And um, Carl, Carl, I mean, Carl is a bit of a genius. He really is because he wrote, he wrote all the, he wrote She's the One, which is one of Robbie's biggest songs. He, he taught me a lot about, um, we, we used to do a lot of covers in that mm-hmm. band. Um, so we would have jam sessions and we would literally do every Bob Dylan song that he would know like 20 and we'd do 20 in a row. Then we'd do 20 Neil Young songs. Wow. So that was really good for me as a young musician too. I'm a big believer in covers. I think uh, all musicians should have a good cover up their sleeve that they can play straight, straight you know, without thinking about it. Well, moving on from, uh, from that, you formed your own band. Yeah. A band called The Lemon Trees, who I remember. I, I mean, the main thing about The Lemon Trees, we did two albums. One got released. The second one didn't because the label hated the second one. And I learned a really good lesson, which when I worked with Robbie came, which is don't make the second album hugely different from the first. I don't want... Uh, to paint a picture of you, oh, the bloke who writes with Robbie Williams because you, there's, there's many more strings to your bow than that. But we have to get on to the, the Robbie Williams question, which was, so you, you'd seen him. How, how did you end up working with him and for such a long time? Um, I was introduced to him by my publisher, mm-hmm. basically. And then he called me up um, and he said, do you, can you write Dirty Pop? And I said, <laughs> yeah, I can definitely do that. Right. And... Um, I was very confident by then. But I was very confident about that. He didn't really say anything when I first met him. He literally walked into the house and said, where's your, where's your studio? And I said, oh, it's upstairs in the bedroom. And he went, he just walked straight up and started singing straight away. Really? I just had to grab a guitar and just catch up with him and plug it in and start. I said, there's a mic. And we started writing straight away. I mean, was the process the same on every song? Or, you know, no. Uh, that was a song called South of the Border, which was on the first album, but... Which um, was a single, wasn't it? It was a yeah, single. Yeah. Um, and then the second day we wrote Angels. But um, the, the writing process then was quite simple. It would just be an acoustic guitar mm-hmm. or it would be a piano. Um, sometimes we'd use a beat. Like Let Me Entertain You was written with a jungle beat. Right. I, 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 I slowed a jungle beat down. So I think jungle was 180 BPM yeah, or something. Somewhere around that, yeah, yeah, so I slowed it down to 140 something, whatever Let Me Entertain You is. Yeah. And we wrote that over a jungle beat. So sometimes we use beats. But mainly it was pretty simple, just guitar, voice, piano, voice. I mean, would it be you, you sit and go, oh, I've got these chords, or he comes in with some lyrics, or, or, or did it just really vary that? I'd, sometimes he'd, he'd have a good lyric idea, yes. He, he, had, he, he, was, he wrote poems. I mean, he still does. And um, sometimes we'd use his poetry. Mm-hmm. And so you worked with Robbie, what, how many albums was it? F- we did five. Five, five albums. Mm. I mean, there was touring as well, I presume. Yeah, lots of touring. So you were having to, you know, you, the pair of you were having to knock out quite a lot of songs in that and time. And that was in a time when singles had additional tracks. Do you remember that? You yeah, yeah, yeah. used yeah. to have CD... Like pa- 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 yeah, um, you know, three extra digi tracks. packs, and yeah. there would be four extra tracks sometimes. Wow. Um, how do you stay creative for writing so many songs? I just try and be culturally curious and not get lazy and 
I like I don't watch TV anymore. I've stopped watching TV, and I, I just try and and I, I, I tell you what I do do every day is I write. I try and write every day on the piano or guitar, and I, I just record little things into notes on my phone. Uh, my advice to anybody here would be just to write a hell of a lot. At this point, obviously, no one's going to be commissioning us because they don't know who we are. Yeah. But then, how do we put together a portfolio or a show reel with yep. shows that we can write for other artists a, a show reel of is not going to mean anything i don't think uh well say you wanted to work with alex turner okay um so i would find a way that you meet him if he's if he's a typical ocd type musician he probably goes to the same coffee shop every day and go and sit in the coffee shop and go up to him okay why not what have you got to lose he's not going to punch you in the face you shouldn't be scared of someone saying no to you. It's, it's not. Just don't take it personally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's give Guy a round of applause. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you.